Hello, this is Hockey the Bean, and today we're going to reading some D and D horror stories. I have six horror stories to read out. Most of them are really short. So if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Well, let's get right into this. With this first horror story, which is probably one of the longer ones. Might be the longest one. The Silent DM. I think this was worth reading because what sort of DM is silent? That's like the one thing you're not supposed to be as a DM. Joining a new campaign as a player after being a forever DM was refreshing for me. Playing as my original character for my very first campaign was nostalgic as well. This was my first paid game on Roll20. I had previously resisted playing paid games, but this time I decided to give it a try. Friends have suggested before that I should become a paid DM. But I've shied away from the idea due to my imposter syndrome. However, over a long weekend, I joined a campaign for, a t for $10 per game. After comparing prices, I found this to be the cheapest option. So let the games begin. In the first week, I loved the setup and organization the DM had. The group consists of a cleric, a warlock, and two barbarians, myself being one of them. We started the game in a desert setting with a fetch quest. The first game was fun, but I felt like something was missing afterward. The second game was just as enjoyable, but I still felt that something was missing. After the third game, I figured out what the issue was. The DM was not talking much. He was very concise and had very few roleplay moments with NPCs. In my mind's eye, the characters were in the desert, but it felt empty due to the lack of environmental details. The feeling of being pulled out of immersion constantly gave me whiplash. There were times when players in the DM wouldn't talk for about three minutes or so. Awkward silence became common as each player tried to ask simple questions to move the game forward, only to receive cryptic answers or simple yes or no responses without any additional details or foreshadowing. Dang, even I did more uh, role-playing than this. The, a game cycle of scale checks being mainly perception and survival checks was becoming tedious. I started feeling burnt out. But then we had a series of missed games and scheduling conflicts, so we took some time apart. I didn't want to be that the at guy player or who backseat drives because I'm a DM myself. But people were falling asleep on Discord. The DM was aware of our boredom, but battles continued with just rolling to hit and rolling to take damage, with little story in between to explain what was happening. So I checked out. I understand the saying "you get what you paid for," but if this is ten dollar D and D. I could, in good conscience, charge people for it. To get paid for that lack of preparation, especially coming from a module, I find insulting. I don't know what travel rules he is using, but felt like he wanted us to feel like we were in an awkward car ride without the option to turn on the radio. During some games, I had to open a YouTube tab to listen to epic music tracks to keep interest during in battle encounters. Oh yeah, for my D&D games, I always have music playing. That's a huge part of D&D. You need to have music playing while you're playing D&D. For any encounter. I have some cool battle music for D&D. It's Persona music. I had some um, environmental music. I mean, heck. I kind of made a recurring joke, even though it's not really a part of the official module, where um, a McDonald's would just open up and um, play a, a, a just a burning memory. Sandboxes can be great, but without a clear aim or side quest, I felt like that, I mean, with the guy poking at the campaign, hoping for something cool to happen. During downtime, I shared my flaws, bonds, and ideals to try to get something going, but the DM gave me nothing. 
The other players shared small things about themselves too, but played in a reserved manner, wanting other characters to figure them out over time. I realized that this campaign wouldn't be what I hoped for. If the lack of description and awkward silence continued, I think the DM is a, guy, is a nice guy. Guy Snai, I am. I can't even words apparently. And knows the rules well. But I've learned that to be a good a game master in any game, you need to shine the spotlight on different players, remind and them why they're here playing. And that's really good advice for any DM. Never feel, well, never or, or, or feel like you aren't doing well enough because you are. Always shine the spotlight on all your players if you can. <sighs> Homebrew is good when not done wrong. Agreed. The DM in this game chose to create his own world and leveling system, as well as learn skills. Meaning in order to learn any skill, you have to obtain a book to teach you said skill. Kind of like skill books in Skyrim. I feel like that should also... Should like work on a sort of in tandem with actually doing the thing enough to get that level of skill in it. This system left us players with very low stats, and we weren't even able to fend off three goblins with four players. This would be fine if we weren't level one or had a chance to dodge an encounter, but we were dropped straight into it with no way to weasel out of it despite our efforts. That is bad. If you're gonna have an interesting concept, at least let the players get to it without just immediately killing them by goblins. I thought it'd be like a fake out and start the real story after we failed, but no. The DM killed three eight quarters of our party and said we need to roll new characters. I had already tried my best to min max the homebrew system, but I just thought I had to try again and gave it a chance. After we died to the goblins, we made new characters and started in town where we had a quest to chop some trees. Seems basic, so we get an axe and head out into the forest. We didn't have the skill to do so. Fine, we go look for the book. The book costs 500 gold points for a basic skill in a starting town. This is, I think that's the case of someone forgetting how much gold is worth in the D&D. And that there are multiple um, currencies in D&D. I think it goes copper, silver, gold, platinum. A commoner will get one gold their entire life. So no, nothing in a general store is going to cost 500 gold pieces in a starting town for a common NPC. Because usually that's for them and their family. For base, Cool, attempt to borrow books since there's no way we have 500 gold pieces to do a starting quest. Obviously, guards come in. Attempt to fight. Guards are unhittable, even with nat 20, because we have no skills. Try to escape. Can't do so without proper skills. Party is wiped out. Did not create a new character. Did not pass go. Did not collect 200 gold points. Yeah, this system is a great idea. Wouldn't have met with other ideas. But you have to let people actually use it. Good comment there. He was right. It was a skill issue. The DM had no skills. Even with that 20, he could not run the game. He probably didn't have enough gold to buy the skill point the skill books needed to DM. That's a good one. Like, how the fuck was that supposed to go? Oh, 
Okay, I thought this was gonna be short. Okay, this is the longest one on, on today. I think. Should be. To give some group on verge of kicking our DM. To give some context, our group is a party of seven. It consists of seven. But there are four main so focuses in this story. Warlock, myself. DM, the problem. Rogue, my partner. Bessie. I mean, Monk, the Bessie seeing it all. <laughs> my goodness, we are scuffed city today. To start off with, me and Rogue wanted to do a D&D session for a while. I had a few people interested. We just needed a DM. We met ours through a mutual friend and grew close rather fast, and he offered to be our DM. Up until the point, this point, we had no issue. Oh, up until this point, we had no issue. A few edgy jokes that didn't hit, but no red, fl no real red flags. Not to make things more clear, I identify myself as Polly, but Rogue is monogamous, and we keep loyal to each other. However, DM is also aware of me being Polly. And assuming my partner is the same. Let's begin the actual story. Session 1. We all sit down. No real major flags come up. This party meets and we scale the world of the DM's one shot. Which they later turn into a full on campaign. The first session is fun. But I noticed Rogue was uncomfortable. Me be... In sense at the time. Just thought it was a bad chairs. We had no back braces. This would turn out not to be the case. What? I don't know what that means, me being sense. Someone explain that in the comments. Session 2! Whew. We make it to a mountain pass and get trapped in a dungeon. Instead, we come across captives from all over the map. My character's backstory is he is an ex-servant to the king of the neighboring countries. So he nicely questions those who aren't from the map where in if they knew anything of this country. They know nothing. However, when a rogue asks you the same question as they I have a shared backstory of being from the same place, but the assassin's guild who has been working as my aide in search for their brother. Suddenly, the NPCs are talking. This is the first red flag, as the DM even lets this rogue torture an elf to death for information without the party noticing. Hmm. Now, in fairness, this could have been part of the plan. But when you have a joint backstory, it's weird how no one knows the country's name when you ask, but suddenly do when someone else asks. Yeah, that is a bit odd. Session 3, we were are down to 5 people. Well, as 2 were on break for a while, but said for us to continue. During this time, Rogue was getting more uncomfortable when we played, especially when the DM kept on referring to a different member, the cleric, as Rogue's name. This is where I started to notice. The day after session 3, I spoke with Rogue and my suspicion has been confirmed. The game had not only been in, in privacy, in, privately messaging Rogue to pull a nice guy act in DMs with I'm here if you need to talk. I'm always here for you. And at times dragging my name through the dirt if Rogue was ever upset. He even invited Rogue over to his house. Alone. Just to chat. On tape off of basically ogling Rogue when no one thought he'd notice. But Rogue had. She'd been saying quietly with the DM's gaze on her without breaking eye contact. Yeah. But, you know, it was just a bat it was just a lack of backs on the e e seats, right? Session four went with no issues, but now Monk was in on the information Rogue and I had discussed. We went, Monk as he's 
is kind of the group that you have an argument, speak to Monk. You have relationship issues, speak to Monk. You know something off with friends you you spoke with Monk. For being, Monk is impartial and will listen and defend both sides of the story. But also keep an eye on things. In session 4, we'd start noticing something different thanks to Monk. Up until this point, DM had been rolling dice from his phone, but in session 4, due to low battery, DM was using dice, but each time they rolled, They'd either tip the address dice tray for a better roll, or sneakily move a dice to have a higher number when attempting to count. <clears throat> Monk had informed they noticed and they weren't impressed as DM had been fudging rolls. DM's fudge rolls. A lot. Let me say to not kill all my I um players, I did fudge a lot of rolls. Except for the, the last fight. Also, once the session was over, Monk and Rook were having jokes with each other and their sexualities as they'd become rather close. And a crude joke came up regarding compromising positions in bed. DM had heard a joke and looked directly at Rogue and laughed with an almost perverse smile on their face. When he left, he attempted to hug Rogue goodbye, in which she was crashed out on the floor, so instead gave an awkward half hug, which creeped Rogue out as he had grabbed a bit too high and had accidentally pressed the side of her breast. Yeah, it wasn't an accident. I don't trust this creep. At this point, Rogue, myself, and Monk knew he was a massive of red flag and had actually stopped the campaign for three weeks to make a new one where the DM was now a PC. As I'd taken over as DM. We did this as a as play six and seven still had yet to return. And we didn't want to progress too far. The entire time DM only stared at Rogue, started metagaming, was stuck in their phone the whole session, and once again... ...fudging rolls to the point that I pitched a party against an angel and targeted DM directly to try and play or kill and get him out of the session. Okay. Fudging rolls as a DM, I can an excuse as a DM uh, myself. That happens a lot, especially when you're dealing with a beginner party, which I was. Fudging rolls as a player, not allowed. Players can't and be fudging rolls. That's against the rules in a lot of different ways. Anyway. We then finished my one shot at over two us us sessions, and I over prepared and got back to session six of DM's campaign. In session six, DM had, had set up this big battlefield to have us fight through waves of monsters. Instead, without two missing new members, or his back, we used invisibility, which a cleric knew, to stealth through the battlefield and immediately sneak, sneak attack and trap the cult general. DM was not happy and was now metagaming and attempting to rewrite his own homebrewed weapons to make it so they didn't have to do a saving throw from being bound by chains. At this point, the DM is actively whining that we had ruined his plans and how he didn't expect he'd need to improvise this session. We took out the boss with it only doing one turn due to failing its checks to get out of binding. By the time we'd finished the session, we were all exhausted with the DM. As DM and left, he did something even more creepy. Once again, Rogue was crashed out on the floor, and to avoid the hug situation, Rogue just gave him a high five that Monk witnessed. DM had done the gentlest 
of high fives and then ran his fingers across Rogue's hand. I was out of the room at the time as I was hosted and waving people off by the door for the early leavers, and I came back to Rogue feeling physically sick or what it had just occurred after the DM had left. Me, Rogue, and Monk agreed that we no longer need DM, and that with the story he, he, I did, it has potential to carry on, on with me as DM, which I'm okay with, and now we just want DM gone. However, at the same time, the next session is meant to be DM's last, and we spent a long, so long on this story, and we all want to finish it as well. And feel stuck with how to get rid of DM as we agree he needs to go at the same time. We are also invested in finally killing the big bad evil guy. Would I be the ass for kicking him out as a host of the sessions one session before it all ends? Yeah, no. You wouldn't be the asshole. Tell him to stay out. Tell the other two players exactly what freaking happened. Okay, this one... This one I don't get. My DM wouldn't let my horse friend player have a salt lick. It was really frustrating because a guy totally would have a salt lick. He had a big, big mouth. He said he would have to roll 16 nat 20s. And we said, and when we said that's ridiculous, he raised it to 32 and yelled at us. He said, if you keep asking, I'll raise it even higher. Should I leave and find a different group? If a DM has ever telling you to roll 16 nat 20s, just leave. Automatically, I don't even understand half of this situation, and I know that I would leave. Also, the bartender in his little game said he wanted me to wet his whistle. I was very uncomfortable. I had to talk to a different NPC for a break. Is it a euphemism? I guess. I don't know. Kidnapped by the DM. I was about 18 and joined a campaign with a well thought out of a loved character, and the DM kidnapped her from the group with his creepy villain character, and his and his way with her while the others got to go on adventures, and I just got to sit there and had no say in the matter. I never went back. Yeah, I went neither. When I said these stories are short, I told you they're, they're short. They're like two cents horror stories. Anyway, here is a story that, honestly, I might have a hard time reading because it, there's no formatting. There's punctuation, as far as I can tell, but no formatting. It looks like a run-on sentence. This might be the one that takes me the longest to read. Anyway, DM has a dirty little secret. I recently moved to a new state, and I was excited to get started with a D&D &D group my age. I'm 29 years old. Dude is 30. I'm only 24, but damn, that kind of hits. I spent several weeks looking for our group, and I found one at my local store. The group was fluctuating between 7 and N, 6 players. All of them required to be 18 plus, a rule set by the DM. We played for 5 months, and I have a lot of thought into my character. I was liking all the other characters and their flaws and people that played them. 
I thought they were cool, too, even if we bumped heads heads now and again. I tolerated and worked with people's flaws, and figured it was all part of the process. I started developing a friendship outside of the game, with the DM, the goth girl of the group, and an overweight autistic dude. But I, I assumed we were all friends as a group collective. Fast forward to Sunday this week. I am told that the DM has some personal drama going on, and for the past two weeks, we have been canceling every Sunday, the days we met. Autistic guy says he can't give me the full details, but it is very serious and hopes the ND can still continue. I wake up the next day, and the goth girl tells me the DM's dirty fucking secret. DM is a level 3 sex ex offender. Level 3? There's levels to this? I thought it was just you are or you aren't. He was a teacher who took pics of a girl's underwear. Yikes, dude. That's why we haven't been able to do D&D. Keep in mind, DM is in his late 40s, and as a side note, has been trying to socialize and be close friends with the women adults in our group in their 20s. I mentally go into crisis management mode and try I to make sure everyone is okay and see if I can still keep my D&D group with me as Dungeon Master. I ride around with Autistic Guy trying to get what campaign notes I, from the D, from the Sex Fender DM. Not a fun experience to still act friendly to the sick fuck for diplomacy sakes. But I managed to get the D&D notes. For some fucking reason, the Autistic Guy is still trying to be friends with the DM. Even after this shit has come out, whatever. I have an appointment with one of the players uh, of our group tomorrow to have coffee and see if he is still interested in playing with me as DM. After I meet with the player, I get a grim picture. Nobody wants to associate with people that knew the DM unless they were already close friends. The only people person that I know for certain is interested in me continuing this story is the autistic guy and the goth girl on the fence. I'm also leaving out some details. The whole group this entire time has had insider drama and everyone seems to hate the autistic guy except for the goth girl. The autistic guy and goth girl have been trying to do control narratives and lies to make themselves look innocent. I don't know why you, you keep on mentioning that they have autism. The only decent person was the guy I met for coffee who advised me to stay the fuck away from everyone in a kind of way. Hey, start over and, er, and try to find a different group. Turns out a decent guy didn't think our personalities matched along with other people for, in our group. But kindly, but didn't think badly of me. But didn't want to be near the autistic guy again. So now I treat the whole group like they're radioactive and keep my distance. TLDR, my DM is a class food sex offender. We all stay away from each other due to personality clashes and trauma. P.S. I have been playing D&D for 4 years and I am disillusioned with the game. I no longer feel like I can trust people in general anymore. And I feel inadequate for me and not picking up on the signs. I think I'm going to quit D&D and just stick to video games and writing a novel for creative ideas. I'm starting to freaking hate people. Quitting D&D as a whole because uh, as you happen to run into a sex vendor seems like An overreaction. Don't let uh, uh, that one bad person who is into a hobby ruin the entire thing for you is what I will always say. Cutting off that a person though, completely inappropriate reaction all around the board. I'm completely with you, OP. This was a horrible thing to find out about your D. Yeah.
And hey, we made it, it just a bit over 30 minutes. This was r slash D&D Horror Stories. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!